Well, I think the approach that we're taking on this bye week and would like for all the players to do the same is, you know, look at what we do this week, what you do personally, individually, as well as collectively as a unit and as a team is to use these days as an opportunity to improve and get better. And that should be the mindset that you go out there with. Right, because if you don't have that mindset, you don't have a purpose. If you don't have a purpose, if you don't have very good mental energy. If you don't have very good mental energy, then you put yourself in a position to create bad habits uh, and maybe even put yourself at risk, you know, in some cases, all right, because other people are trying to do it and you're not going as fast as they're going. So, you know, yesterday was kind of a uh, tough day for us, you know, outside, but today the, the, the energy and intensity was a lot better. The execution was a lot better. The tempo was a lot better. So, uh, we probably, you know, made some progress from yesterday to today. Um, you know, tomorrow we'll probably start a little bit, uh, you know, each day, you know, we, we kind of focus a little bit on, you know, an opponent that we have down the road. Uh, so in this case, we got Arkansas, Tennessee, and now Texas A&M. All right, so the, before we have another bye week. So, um, you know, we spent one day on each of those teams, and, you know, tomorrow we'll spend a day on, you know, starting with that A&M as well as to do fundamental work. So, um, you know, nothing to report other than that, and that's kind of where we're at. Just wanted to ask you about Xavier McKinney. Just what impresses you about him and his approach to the game? Well, X is a really hard worker. Uh, he sets a great example. He's always full speed ahead and how's it, how he practices and how he tries to do things. Uh, he's very focused, uh, you know, in whether it's meetings, walkthroughs, whatever it is. Uh, and I would say that, you know, him and Anthony Jennings have been, you know, our two most productive players on defense, you know, so far, you know, this year. Um, and I think both of those guys are, you know, guys that provide really positive leadership, you know, for us. But, um, you know, X sets a good example every day. Uh, he's obviously talented and, and explosive, and uh, but he really does try to do things the right way. So, uh, and I think he's made a tremendous amount of improvement. He's a lot more confident uh, than he was a year ago in not only what he's supposed to do, but how he's supposed to do it and why it's important to do it that way. You spoke a few times this year about the, the high number of snap counts. What do you see on film that, that can cut down on those 88, 86 snap games? Well, a lot of it is just mental errors, you know. I mean, you got to get off the field. When you get opportunities to get off the field, especially on third down, um, you know, we lost contain on a quarterback two or three times on third down where we had people covered. Uh, just keep the quarterback, make the quarterback throw the ball from the pocket. Um, you know, other times we make mental errors. Uh, whether it's gap control or uh, how to fit plays. So, you know, the responsibility for the guys on the field when you're on defense is we got to get off the field. So get more turnovers, get more third down stops. Uh, responsibility for you on offense is stay on the field. You know, you're supposed to, you know, end the, every possession with a kick, uh, but you also want to extend those drives as much as you can, try to score every time you can, whether it's a touchdown field goal and it's going to be up. You know, sometimes when we have to punt and we're smart and they do things to take advantage. So, but you want to try to keep the ball when you got it on offense. And then you want to try to make plays on special teams that are going to score or set up a score or control the vertical field position in the game. I noticed you've had Jordan Battle as kind of a single high safety and some dime looks over the last couple of games. And Jared talked about his communication yesterday as well. Just how much trust do you have in him from an execution standpoint and a comprehension of the defense standpoint? Well, he's a very bright young guy. He really picked up on what we do very quickly. I think he played in a really good high school program at St. Thomas where he was, you know, probably well coached uh, by a lot of good coaches. Um, and um, so I, I think that probably helped his development when he got here. Uh, but we have confidence in him. Uh, he doesn't make a lot of mental errors. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good football player. He's a good tackler. He's instinctive. Um, so, and I think he'll just get better and better. 
What is the status of Will Reichard and where he might be trending for next week's game? Well, we'll, we'll we're kind of holding him out this week until Monday, so we think that he's we think he should be ready for next game. But you know, these things are all day to day, and nobody can predict exactly how something's going to heal up. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll find out on Monday. Uh, Coach, I know you were a coordinator once upon a time, and you've hired a lot of coordinators. And I wonder if the role of coordinators has changed over the years, and if so, in what ways, if they have. Uh, I, I don't I, – you know, I can't speak of everybody else and what they do wherever they are or how coordinators are managed in other places. Um, I, I, I don't, all I know my experience when I was a coordinator, um, you know, I did what the head coach wanted us to do. Uh, I tried to, um, put a plan together and teach the players so they could go out there and execute it. And, uh, there was never a time when I was a coordinator that I didn't call all the defenses, which is what I allowed our, our coordinators to do here. They call the plays, they call the defenses. I make suggestions you know, kind of in between series or whatever, or, you know, help with adjustments. And and that's pretty much, you know, what the head coach did when I was a coordinator. So um, I, I really can't say. I think there's probably, uh, because football has sort of evolved into being um, a spread type game uh, where, in the old days, more people did the same things, if that makes sense. You know, I mean, there was a time when 90% of the people ran I formation, uh, you know, 20, 25 years ago. So now the diversity in what you see on offense is way greater than that. Uh, and I think that because of that, maybe sometimes, you know, coaches hire guys because of their expertise to go ahead and do what they do on offense or defense or vice versa. And uh, maybe that's changed a little bit because the game has gotten so sort of so much diversity that there's a lot of, lot of different moving parts and a lot of different circumstances. But we, we have not changed and gone in that direction in any way, shape or form. You know, philosophically, we try to do on offense what we have the players to do. Our system is you know, geared toward allowing them to do that uh, so we can adjust and adapt it. And, uh, you know, same thing on defense. Is the competition at punter between the two guys we've already seen, or could you see a guy like walk on like Ty Pirine, uh into the mix? Well, everybody on our team competes. So, but the two guys that... Um, you know, we have an expectation should compete and do the job better are the two guys that have done it so far in the game. But I think everybody on our team competes. Have you kept your guys from buying into the outside noise? Like, how, like what do you guys do to keep your guys from keeping the clutter out? Uh, talk about it just about every day. Um, and, you know, you kind of, you know, ignore, you know, some of those things uh, because I think humility is very important to paying attention to detail and doing things the right way. Uh, I don't think it really matters at all where you're ranked or rated right now. It only matters when it's January, uh, when the season's over. That's, that's all that matters. Uh, and it can slip away very, very quickly. And as it did this last week, it wasn't even because the team didn't win it must have been somebody's perception of how they played. All right, so it's not even about winning. It's about how you play. And uh, I think every player creates value uh, by being his best every time he gets the opportunity to compete. Um, the scoreboard shouldn't matter. The score, the who you're playing shouldn't matter. Um, and where you're ranked shouldn't matter. And what somebody says on the internet uh, shouldn't matter. So you should be playing because you want to get the self-satisfaction that you know you did your best to be the best you could be. 
And uh, hopefully that's what we can get our players to focus on. Sometimes we succeeded at that, and sometimes we haven't. Do you have an update on DJ Dale, and are you guys maybe taking a cautious approach with him? Uh, he practiced. Which day did he practice? He practiced. Uh, he practiced one day, and then we didn't practice him today. Uh, and he'll probably practice again tomorrow or maybe Friday. You know, um, so we're, we're kind of doing that with, you know, several of our guys this week. All right, thank you.